Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, look, look. Uh, we, I am uh, Jack Gibbon. I am the co-owner of Master Cosmos. I'm currently uh, hosting this interview with Lovely Pixie. Uh, oh, wrong way. Uh, talking today about Empire and his experience at Empire. Obviously, this is quite a close thing to fix because he's been doing this for how many years now? Too many to count. Too many to count. I've been playing Empire for quite a while now. So, um, <laughs> yeah, fair few years. Fair few years. And I'm still on my first character, so. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've only <laughs> gone to one event uh, and I've really enjoyed it. So, we get to just talk about uh, a great hobby and a great area in the hobby that is quite well known. Yeah. Um, so, oh, uh, I have a couple of questions for you, obviously, because we're here. The interview. So, first question I'm going to ask you is, so, uh, uh, what what caused you to go to Empire? What what, what um, do you, do you guys do? So, a lot of my friends were playing Empire. Um, a lot of like my, my close friendship circle from CP were playing it. And it's not that far from my house either because I live literally in Northampton, so it's really close for me. Um, the game's always been situated really close, even when it was a tournament stud. Um, it's never been that far. And it was almost like a little local lot, but not little, obviously, because of the size of the game. And it, I just think that but my friends just convinced me enough just to go and join their group and join their nation. And I just haven't left since I got there. Like, I got there, I had such a great time. My first event, I made loads of new friends um, that have now become pretty close friends over the years. And, yeah, it's, I think that's one of the main reasons it made me go, is because my friends played, and then I decided that I needed to play myself just to try it out. I'm always a person that can't judge a game until you've tried it. Um, games offer so much different things anyway, so I just went for it, and I've really enjoyed it since being there, to be honest. Yeah, because obviously Empire is such a huge game, and it's been running for so many years now, and now it's one of the biggest games in the world. Uh, I think it's ranked number three or number four. My I believe so, yeah. I know it's definitely one of the biggest yeah. in the country. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely a game that once I heard about it from her hearing that you went and a couple other people went from other games, it was something I was really also intrigued into. Uh, so, yeah, and here's a question for you. What do you enjoy most about Empire? Uh, there's so many aspects of the game I really enjoy. For me, personally, it's the politics side of the game because it's a very political game if you throw yourself into it. Uh, it's a very player-led game as well. Like it's, it's not like other games where plot comes to you as such. Like all of your actions that you make, even from the smallest side up to the largest side of the game, has influences in the world. And, and then, like the plot team will then just do plot around like stuff that you've done. Um, it, it's a very free-form game. Um, I think it's it's a game where networking is quite important. Um, so you're making friends in your own nation, making friends in other nations, especially when you enter the political side of the game. You need to have people on the same page, otherwise you're going to find it very difficult if you're just going out making enemies all the time. Um, so keeping people sweet and helping them out. So then at a later stage, you might have to call in a favour and then, th then people will join in on that. And it, it's a great game to enable game for other people, um, especially the political side of it. And a lot of people will think that politics is just in Senate, um, where it's not. It, it, it's across the field from the religion side of the game to the military campaign to the magic side of the game. E even down to somebody just trying to peddle their wares uh, could find that somebody else is doing the same thing, but at a higher price. So they might want to drive down that price and, it's a very role play heavy game. I also think the one thing I kind of enjoy about it, unlike other games I've played, there's no camp attacks. Like, so there's no monster crews rolling in it on, on your camps. Like you'll only find those when you go through the Sentinel gate to the conjunctions, the skirmishes or the battles. Like you don't find 
uh, massive amounts of like violence happening in in Anvil itself. It's it's still a city, it's still full of people. Um, so there is still that evidence that, that that it does happen, but you, you don't have regular gate attacks like it. So, for instance, like a CP or LT. So it's quite a laxed atmosphere. You, you're not always on edge, thinking somebody's going to attack you. So I think that's another thing I really enjoy about it. But again, the politics side of the game can change those aspects. And you know, like I've had a lot of experience where I've ended up getting cursed, uh, having rows in the middle of the street with people. Um, you're yeah, having some very heated discussion in tents that are being heard because canvas isn't soundproof but, but that's the whole aspect of the political game and you can just go as far down that rabbit hole as much as you put yourself in it mm. Is, um, for, obviously Empire is quite known in the LARP community but for people that may have not gone to Empire before what would you describe Empire as uh, in your eyes so the game of Empire itself um, is the gathering of people uh, which are known as the heroes, which are the citizens uh, of the Empire, gathering in a city called Anvil, which is where all the games take place. Um, and you've got all the various nations from each other, and they all differ so, so differently. So, for instance, with Varushka, the nation I'm in, it's a very... Well, what we like to call a spook, spooky nation. Uh, we have a lot of folklore. We, we love, where it's like about wolves and monsters and ends then a certain dress style. And a lot of us do a certain type of accent, but then you can have on the other side, the coin uh, to quote, you could have the league who are a very theatrical competition of a nation where everything's competition and their look is so different from ours for instance like we, we have a lot of eastern european looks for us uh, the league is a, like a very italian renaissance look so and then you've got nations like dawn which are a very feudal night look and they're all about their glory and love and you know so there's so many different little aspects of it as far as the game itself goes it, you are part of an empire um, there are titles that can only be held by players for instance such as the senators who would decide the laws who would decide on build projects for the empire so that could be fort spy networks uh, raising armies um, there's to a degree some elections so for instance the, the most known about election that Senate would deal with would be the, the throne, which is essentially a citizen who has got so much renown and they've got the Senate behind them after a long debate and they are now the throne. So they have a lot of feet. They can literally access all of the forums such as uh, military council where the generals are deciding on what their army is going to do to fight these large barbarians who are coming in and trying to take their lands um, or even you've got the diplomatic side of it who are trying to negotiate with the barbarians as they're called or foreign nations who essentially have more rights than barbarians i we're just not going to slaughter you on the spot um, then you've got the whole faith side of the game and the way because the empire doesn't worship or venerate deities. It, it's more a way you live in the virtues such as courage and ambition and wisdom, um, seven paths, one way. Um, and then you've got like the whole magic game where you are then dealing with these eternals, which are mystical beings from different planes. Um, who, who normally focus on the realms of magic. So that would be autumn, winter, spring, summer, night and day. Um, and yeah, like it, it can be whatever you really want to make empire. If you just want to go and drink with friends for the weekend with your icy money at an icy bar, you can do that. If you just want to go, go and fight, you can do that. If you want to dive into further in the political game, you can do that. Uh, if you want to set up, yourself economically so you just want to run your own bar or as long as you're not taking like real legal tender and you're doing it all for ic money you can do all of this so empire is very much a game of freedom and a game that is pretty much 100 percent player led um a lot of the decisions that get made the outcome so for instance a war front might change and uh, a nation might lose some territory because the armies are elsewhere dealing something else across the world 
uh, but all of that would be decided by players. You know, it's the generals who command the armies. They, they don't command the heroes, but they do command their armies. Um, and these armies are represented on a big table, uh, almost like a risk map. And um, they, they put their orders in the season, end of the season, so the end of the event. And then uh, they, there's something called the Winds of War that goes up, the PD will write, which is essentially the outcome of what happened with those general's actions. It's the same as stuff that gets put through the Synod, so the, essentially the voting forum for all the priests in the Empire, um, or Senate, or like motions that get put through by senators, or um, they, they will end up in like the Winds of Fortune, and then anything normally done by the magicians will end up in the Winds of Magic. You know, it's, it's so much to the game. It's a game of many layers. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's just what you want to do and how far you actually want to go and that you're only really limited by yourself, in, in my opinion. You can be limited by other players' ambitions, but then that's part of the game. Uh, anything literally can be made political in the game and you don't have to have a title to be involved in the politics. Um, I've seen some of the greatest politics come from just a priest putting a motion in and getting their assembly to agree to it. And it's just changed the whole landscape. Uh, one of the most com, one of the most um, influential things in the last couple of years in the game has been something called the Liberty Pack, which was started by players um, who weren't sitting in Senate, who weren't sitting on a cardinal position or a gem or anything. And the whole idea was that it was getting the ambassadors who speak to the foreign nations to agree that there should be no slavery anymore. But this changed the landscape so much. Even as an empire, we are against slavery as citizens. There is it's wide repercussions have happened uh, through other foreign nations who may not agree with it or weren't invited to these discussions. And the ripples definitely go out in game. But like this was something that was started by players. It was a player-led idea. Players came up with it. They went through the legal motions, getting a senator to raise the idea. They got the ambassadors together to talk because they're the only ones who can talk to these foreign net delegates um, or barbarian delegates. And then it just all went from there and it became a thing over a couple of years. And now it's a legal ratifying document. So it's just changed the change. Like there were some foreign nations who wanted to be our friends, wanted to be our allies but they had to end slavery and they have. So th effectively that's changed the original brief of these foreign nations through a player action. Hmm. Okay. So but what you're saying is it's a very varied game depending on what you want to do. And you can definitely move along in getting things. You're saying about obviously the Senate and things, uh, hmm. which is a prominent thing in the game. As you were saying, it's definitely something that's prominent. Um, well, I was going to ask you, but you mentioned it earlier about uh, the nation. So, yep. for people that may not know what they are, um, nations are pretty much almost like. How, how would you explain it? Um, how so, the na explain? nations, what a lot of people probably say, are like in older games, or look like CPRLT, uh, they, they are the factions. They, these are the group of people that are coming together in Anvil. They're all camping together, like I see. They're, they're role playing together. They're taking the battlefield together. Um, it's, it's effectively parts of Anvil. So imagine like a city in districts. You know, you have like your important buildings, and I'm going to say first the forge, the bar, you know, next to the senate, but then across the way you'll have the hub where the priest meets, the whole of worlds down by the gate and the ritual circle, um, and the military council tent are in like essentially another side of the field, but in between these are where all of these camps are forming of the nations, and every nation has their own type of brief um I, I could quote the wiki for days because there is an entire wiki that pdf put up uh, with thousands of words it's got um, the majority of the history that what we know because there was some sketchy starts at the beginning 
um, which I would always encourage people to read because the, the wiki is very useful, especially if you want to play an certain architect in a certain nation. Um, so, for instance, I play, a, my architect is actually a wise one uh, in Varushka. So, traditionally, we elect the senators as part of the role in game, but what we also do is, is we counsel um almost like younger members like our volhoffs and our wardens um on 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 their actions we're, we're not there to tell them what to do but we are there as an advisory figure so people would come to us and ask us things like i know there's several wise ones that i go to regularly even as a wise one myself um but then every nation has different architects so and they vary so much uh, one that comes to mind is like the um sorry i'm just going to mind uh, so like the reavers and the orcs who are normally outcasts from their legions but they go they go around and they'll collect like the thieves and and like uh, anybody who's breaking the law because the imperial orcs are so are so loyal to the empire because that's how they got their place but then on the same side you could have um a reckoner from the league who who, who is going out and, and, and helping other leaguers complete something called a dead reckoning which is a, a score to be settled against somebody who has wronged them in a way um and then you have even in the like the winter mark you have steiners you know your big strong firm warriors who are there to weather the storm and lead by example and show the courage side of it so the game can vary on so many different levels and that's only a fraction of the nations that are covered in game um because it's quite a few <laughs> so but i that's why the wiki is so big because there's so much to include um that every nation has got what they need every, every nation has got all the information that a player can walk in and go oh, okay then I, I can go do this and you know you've got the egregores in camp who are essentially spirits of the nation um but they're almost like an npc they're not there as a ref format they're not there to ref the rules of the game they're there to encourage and enable game so if, if you've always stuck you know you've got two people that that pd have trusted to do it and that they know the nation enough that they that you can go encourage game like i regularly role play with my egregores and i've been playing for a fair few years now but it's because i enjoy the role play and the half magic side which is the half magic every nation has their own type of half magic um and a lot of that can be enabled through the egregores themselves but like the half magic isn't something where you're going to get uh like stats or powers from it, it's a very role play based thing um and we've we in varushka for instance one of ours is what we call the wolves um now wolves can be anything because the roads is when, when the roads are out, the roads are really important to us. We ward the roads and you always build the roads and build the walls alongside the roads. But, if, but wise ones will tell you not to stray from the roads because of the walls that are about. But those walls can take many forms. And that's very much part of our half magic as well as a lot of other stuff, um, including re one, of the, one of the oldest traditions, which is uh, tying a blindfold around your eyes. If, if something if you don't agree with something um you can see wise ones they'll just tie their tie these blindfolds around their eyes whilst somebody's talking to them so they can hear the words better and interpret them instead of relying on the distraction of sight so it's, again it's, it depends which nation you're in it's depending on your half magic but they vary so so different from one another okay so there's a lot of different things that a lot of elements that go into each nation as someone that plays in Wintermark, uh, I only got to one event, but I I've learned so much about it because of what the themes are, and that's what gives you that insight. And uh, some obviously you Pixie, you play in uh, Barushka, which is quite a very interesting nation. I've always I've always liked looking at darker side of things such as werewolves, vampires, demons, monsters. Uh, and it's very interesting to see that and a game like Empire can do that, and it works so well. Um, the thing I was going to ask you next about was, what have you accomplished at Empire? Obviously, uh, there's a lot from what you told me in the past, but... So, 
Yeah, so there's a few that stand out. Um, for me personally, it's, these are like more things I'm proud of um, and what I've done in game. Um, I think one of the biggest ones that stands out is a territory called Ossium. Um, we went on a gamble, which is when I was a general. I was a general of the Golden Axe, one of the three armies belonging to Varushka. Myself and four Dornish generals um, decided to go invade uh, one of the barbarian territories. Um, they went over their special golden bridge. I went through one of my well, my old vales and my old home and down the Somalek shore. And I met with them and we took this territory called Ossium. We were then reinforced uh, midway through our campaign, which was about three events worth um, that we eventually took it. And we were the first generals in 200 years worth of history to take land from the barbarians, not reclaim our land from the barbarians, but actually take their land away from them and create this fresh new virgin territory for the empire. Um, I was the only non-Dornish <laughs> because everybody else was from Dawn and there was just this one little Varushkin going, we'll just slaughter them all and we'll take their land. Um, but the, the biggest thing that then came out of it was I then also became the first senator of that territory. Um, so somebody else, my, my friend Scarlett, became general of the Golden Axe um, for a little bit of politics, but a lot of good role play. And then I stood on, um, so the, the Senate decided on who was getting Ossium, uh, which nation would get it. Um, and for some reason it was between us and League. Um, and the league didn't have any involvement in it, but there were some similarities to like the civil service, the NBC, they, they draw up similarities on who would actually prosper the most from it. Um, Senate resoundingly agreed that Ossium, this little swampy backwater uh, territory, would go to Varushka, and that was on the Saturday. And then on the Sunday, our wise ones um, held the election for the senator, and I won that. Um, and have managed to build Ossium to a really good place within its first year. So I've gone from coming in and conquering and, and doing this military campaign to then moving into a pure economic side. And how can I, for instance, help what is there? So one thing we had was, was uh, an abundance of slaves that were left by the Druze, by the barbarians, and we had to work out what to do with them. And I wanted to give them the freedom of choice of where they went. So the first thing I did was, well, after moving some of the sand fishers, which was a tribe that was already there, of orcs that didn't want to be there anymore, I spoke to the centre of Holberg and we agreed that we, we would put a motion through in Senate because the Senator only gets one motion in an event. You can only raise one motion. You can only support one motion. So whatever you are bringing up in Senate, you need to believe in because you're only going to get one shot. If it fails, you don't get another one. Like that's your one motion for the entire event gone. You can still vote on motions. You can still discuss and debate on it um, because that's your right as a Senator. You can only raise one motion and support one motion. So, I had to think very clearly what my motions were, and I only had three events, basic three full events, to get my nation or get my territory to a good place. Because as a senator, you're also meant to not just think about your nation. Uh, you have to swear an oath, and, and you have to think about the empire as a whole. So what your actions are doing, you have been chosen by your people to speak for your territory and represent the empire. So one of the first things I was doing was the sandfishers weren't happy where they were. So we had to move them. So we moved them into league territory and gave them a bit of swamps that was uh, occupied by bandits and, and, and they settled there. Um, the second one was dealing with all of these Druze slaves that we kept finding over and over and over and over again. And when they're slaves, that they have no rights. Even by an empire, we needed to give them some form of rights. But to do that, it's a legal motion, so it needed to be put through in the Senate. So I, I did almost do a boo-boo by giving the entire Druze 
uh, foreigners' rights, which have been really bad, really bad, because that's like equal rights to a citizen, but not quite. Um, due to because wording is a very big important thing, like like real life politics, wording is so important because what you're putting in is law. Once it's ratified, it is law. Um, and so I, I chose the words all those orcs in Ossian that was formerly um, formerly subjugated by the Druze deserve the rights of foreigners so they then have our protection so it is now our job as an empire to protect them and rehome them find them a place in the empire and we have many different orcs that aren't the imperial orcs living in different parts of the empire so i can i can think of the orcs that live in the marches that used to be the oaten prowls um and the sand fishers that have gone to holberg so we can always find a place and what i wanted to do from an icy perspective was get everybody on the same territory and working together to build this new home. Um, to a degree it worked, to a degree it also got me cursed, but that's part of the game, you know? Um, but it was some really fun role play between me and a few others, uh, and it was all player led, so it was really nice. Um, that's definitely one of one of my favorite accomplishments. Um, I've got a few, but that definitely stands out for me. Um, because it was such a roller coaster of two years, I I became a general after being an adjutant for a year. Um, so I got my first imperial title in game, and I rolled with this army that my nation worked together to make better um, by giving it a quality that could take land from people, and then making it a large army, um, enabling me to be able to do this. And then obviously then going into the Senate game straight afterwards. So it, it was a very roller coaster ride for, for my character, especially because I've gone from a very grim, dark uh, versus Russians are known for melancholy humor anyway, and being quite dark with our humors of, uh, well, you know, like, as, as you would know, Jack, it, it's the phrase from the Mongols today, today may um, is a good day to die, but tomorrow would be more convenient. It, it's that type of sense of humor. Um, yeah. But then having to roll in and think more of the humanitarian side. Luckily enough that when I started this character, I was a priest. So my game has always been about the people. Um, mm -hmm. So it just makes it on a bigger scale. And as a result of some of the stuff we've done, um, I got mentioned in one of the Winds of Fortune, uh, where myself and Varushka went around gathering a load of Liao, which is um, essentially some power that priests can take to enable them to do their skills and better their connection with the way itself so with the virtues and we got myself and my congregation at the time so that's my personal resource um again this all happens off screen and off the field but then gets put into a write-up um and one of my egregores we're doing insights, so looking at all of these refugees that the Thul gave back to us that used to be Imperial slaves. And we had to make sure that who we were bringing back into the empire was, wasn't affected. And because of that, we found a Mora, which is a wolf, essentially. It's a, uh, somebody who is a shapeshifter, so they were hiding and trying to get back in to the empire, and we found them. Um, so they didn't go off in the wilds and then start hunting hurting civilians uh, we found like a girl a young girl that was made out of spiders and tree sap um so there was some oh and we found a, a cultist of wendigo who is an eternal who's currently illegal to deal with in the empire um due to the flesh-eating cult side of it um so like it, but then i got mentioned in the wiki and then i had and it was said that there would be some information stuff that i would have which PD decided to put in my player pack and suddenly I had a load of players just swarm in on me because I had the information because I was named in the wiki before the event in the Winds of Fortune. But it was really nice because these were all these little tent-based encounters that I was then able to go to newer players and go, here, there's a thing, go do the thing. Like, I don't need to do it. I've, I've just done I've just done something good. There you go, here's the thing. Go, go, go enjoy the role play. Because I know that these newer players and a mixture, because there was only five people that could go on them, I knew there would be a mix of older players and newer players, and I'd rather give out the game to others and just hoard it all to myself. Because yeah. at that point, I'm taking perfectly good opportunities. Now, for me, the reward was enough getting mentioned in the wiki by my character name, because the only other time I got that was when they publish who's sitting on what title. 
um, in the Imperial Records and also my orders when I write them they would get published word for word what I write so everybody can see what the generals are doing um, so actually being named in in some of the Winds of Fortune it, it was a, that was reward enough for me because it, it, it just it's not a common thing so for me that was enough for all the plot they gave me I'd rather just give it out and let others get that game because then at that point I've just made at least five to ten people's weekends possibly better and that that's all for me like for me that's all i want I, I just want people to have a good time be it for a bad be it for like uh angsty bad role play where people are shouting at people or even happy role play you know like it it, it can really influence some of the best role play i've had at empire has been really angsty shouty role play where it where moments can just turn like that and just become so tense and suddenly there's a temple of people not knowing if somebody's going to go mental and stab you up. Um, but like, that's some really good role play that comes from it, but that's part of playing your character. Um, okay. But yeah, that's definitely a standout moment for me. And um, Ossium as a whole, because it's just been, because it's the first proper territory the empire has taken. Nobody knew how it was going to work. There was, we didn't know how the tax was going to work on it, which is what determines what the budget that the Senate can spend. We didn't know the potential of it. We didn't know what was going to happen to any of the Borse resources. So that's like your white granite and your mithril, uh, which are used to upgrade armies, build buildings, you know, and we didn't know what was going to happen to them, whether those seats were going to become imperial, whether they were going to become national. And then obviously when you when you do something like this, you get what's called opportunities, which is mentioned in the Winds of Fortune, um, which is a chance, a certain time limit chance for players to act and get something cool. Uh, but the players need to do essentially those things. That could be raised Senate motion, that could be taking, uh, again, a Synod motion through for a load of the elves and priests to go in and help out. Um, Ossium as a whole has been a very labor of love but it's paved the way for the empire now to know what to do if they get new territories because if you get an old territory back so for instance if, if, if we took past the, something that belonged to the brass coast it, and we gave it back to the brass coast it would more than likely go back to them because they held it first and senate will probably turn around and go no they they should have their lands back because we've been there as an empire for so long these are our ancestral lands when when the when we first came to Tumriel, which is the realm where we play. Um, so on on that note, with new territories, this Ossium has shaped a whole part of the game. In okay, so if we take more of Unlack, we've got a rough idea what to do and how to set it up and how to make that part of the empire and not a territory. So for instance, Ossium, it was so oppressed it was full of these things called the miasma pillars that that just cause misery and these magical pillars that just cause misery um and really limits people's abilities to be heroes you know because it's about the oppression and keeping your slaves in check and the druze as, as barbarians are inherently cruel even to one another um it's like a dog eat dog world with them um they would stab you in the back quicker than anybody else so it was very much trying to undo that and then put what the moral principles of the empire was in its place. And I feel like we have achieved that. We've made it, it's not making Ossium great again, it's making Ossium great because it was never great in the first place because rolling in there, we saw how bad it was. And, all, and a lot of us just wanted to free as many people as we could whilst driving out the druge and getting them out there and sending them off home. And then, you know, we're going to come for your land next and we're going to just keep taking it until there's nothing because we are in a war with them. Okay. So you mentioned, obviously, uh, one of those memorable moments being Ossium. Um, mm. Is there another memorable moment you can mention? Because I know you mentioned a couple to me off uh, screen before. about kind of. Yeah, there, there's been some very political game but i don't want to too much go into it because of the fact that it affects other people's games um and on an offline forum it can really manipulate a game going forward um if people watch and go oh well we know that's a thing when 
it wouldn't be a you wouldn't know it was a thing unless you was in that tent having that conversation yeah but there, there are things a lot of conversations happen um that can start a domino effect in game and there's i've been a part of a few of them um yeah. i think a proud moment I think it was more as an empire more than myself. I was just involved in that battle. It was a battle to save one of the armies called the Black Forms. Um, this was in a territory called Leith Haven that was overrun. And we had one of the most impossible tasks to save this. If, if we didn't succeed in this, we would have lost one of our armies. Uh, and that can then have massive repercussions on 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 the impit on the war campaign on the war map and things like that. Um, and we had to get to we had to clear this forest. We had to get to the centre of it, and we had to hold this stone circle for about forty five minutes. If one of the enemy, even if but one, stepped foot in there for longer than five minutes, it was a fail we would have we would have lost the army and we probably would have died um a lot of people did die in leith haven and i see a lot of my friends died and so there was a lot of role play feels like i had to carry a marcher because i saw the badger on his chest and i knew that that was my friend's flowers who was also a general i knew that was her people now generals on the battlefield we're not there to command we have no legal authority to do it we are maybe some people would look towards us because we're the ones discussing the plans and then it's for us to rely so the field marshal that gets nominated will just uh, by the military council for that battle will decide on the plan and how we're doing it and that yeah. is their role they're not an imperial position they, they are just there and they're elected amongst ourselves of okay what's the plan how are we doing this we've got the rough reports from the scouts but how are we actually going to do this um and then we filter that information back down i think matt himself um matt pennington one of the directors at pd summed it up beautifully that it's will you follow me um not you have to follow me so and, and you find that if, if you are an inspiring presence if people do believe in you they will follow you into the thickest and and Lee of Haven is a battle made a lot of heroes, um, be it them dying or be it them surviving. But we had also seven minutes to get on there and seven minutes to get off. So 14 minutes to move over 500 people and get them back and hold that objective in between hand. Um, it was a very tight battle. It was a very emotional battle. Um, but I feel some of my actions of running in and just throwing myself at shield walls, other people backed in and, you know, it, it created a lot of moments, like a lot of my pride moments is seeing what some of my words can do to some of my friends. Um, yeah. I've seen some great hero heroism through just a little bit of encouragement. I've had people ask me how to get involved in certain aspects of the game. And I'll point them in the right direction. So I can't walk the path for them, but I can definitely walk alongside them. So it's easier just to point people in the right direction. Um, a lot of things I'm proud of are a lot of things that are in game, which I do not feel for this conversation because that's definitely a find out job. Yeah, that's fine. Um, well, here's, here's another question I had for you. Um, what would you advertise new players of Empire to do or to prep for uh, um, going along? So, obviously, pack smart. Uh, good shoes. Uh, can bring more socks than you need. Um, definitely read the wiki. That's a 100% thing I would always say to do before going to the event because the wiki gives a lot of background. It is big. It is a lot of words, but there's also... Um, with history stuff like the Winds of Fortune, Winds of War, there's also audio files of those. Um, there are people that are narrating them. Um, definitely join the Facebook groups of the nation that you're intending on playing. If you say, oh, well, I really want to go join the league, because then you can ask questions. And I'm going to say 98 to 99% of the time, uh, players are nothing but more than helpful. Um, try and stay on brief as much as you can, especially with kit. 
Um, it's not as bad as what some people may say it is. Like, um, it, as long as you're constantly working on it, so you're you're essentially making your kit better and better. But that's more for you than I feel than for everybody else. You know, because everybody wants to look good. Everybody wants to look the part. You know. Um, but yeah, definitely look at look at it. Don't walk in with the um, well, ambition's great and I love it. Um, but don't walk in thinking oh, I'm going to take this territory uh, or I'm going to take this title um, because reality is there may be people who have been working for years to get where they are or that they are doing the job so well that new people might not be considered. It's hard to breaking on your first event for your first event just go and enjoy yourself um as any rule one in larp is it's just a game enjoy yourself and guaranteed you'll find your part um don't if you want to take it really seriously take it really seriously but make friends interact with as many people as you can and if you don't know certainly ask questions because nobody's going to begrudge or gonna downplay you if you don't know an answer to something if you don't know how things work because the way way LARP generally works is we we can educate one another on stuff and we can help one another um so i think that's definitely a big part of the game um if you are entering into the religion game and you don't know so much and speak to priests of your nation or or priests of your virtue you know um if you want to get involved in the military game really much speak to the general speak to the adjutants uh, so those who are elected who essentially they're the pa for a general uh, if you want to get involved in the magic game you know the hall of worlds is open to any magician that can open a portal um so you can go there and you can find out about magic the the information is there um it's just how much you're prepared to go and find it but rule one enjoy yourself look after yourself to start with oc make sure you're eating properly make sure you're staying hydrated make sure you're staying warm and dry in colder events and cool off in in the hotter events you know all things that we all think is just common sensible knowledge but a lot of LARPers will forget that, and I am terrible for myself for it. Um, try and go to bed at a proper time, uh, because if you're staying up until like 5 or 6 a.m., I know I'm a bit of a hypocrite for saying this, but if you're staying up till 5 or 6 a.m., there might be the reality that you're not going to get up for 10 to go to your battle, and, and, and that could be something that you could really look forward to doing. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is don't be scared of the game. And don't be scared of other players. You know, yeah. we're all here on our holiday. Um, we're all paying to be here. Some people are volunteering to be here, you know, with like the game teams and people who play playing civil servants, people who are working at the bar, like the real proper bar. Um, so we're all investing our own time here. And, and the only way we can make it a better game is respecting that fact that everybody yeah. is dedicating time to be here it is everybody else's holiday and, and you'll find that if you want games to be enabled to you or if you want people to take you as an enabler again being friendly with people is a really good thing and uh with empire especially ask people their backstories it's a thing you have to write your own backstory so ask people backstories that's how i started yeah because as someone that has only gone to one event i went to my first event I checked the wiki, I checked Winsomark, I had all the kit ready. The only thing I forgot to check was the races or look at them properly. So I went into the event, typically I'm holding two pairs of elf ears right now. Uh, hey, I went into Bridget. the event thinking, I thought I was going to be an elf. Going into it going, oh, okay, I can play an elf, I can do a, car a race I've never played. And then going, oh, I need antlers. Oh, I need this. I need that. I'm like, oh, right, okay. To to a degree, yeah. Um, so I'm also a changeling, um, as you well know. I I, I did something in game. Um, this was again when I was a general. And we were taking Ossia, and we got a blessing of Elinara, who's one of the Summer Eternals, um, who made our arm, who gave us some more magical allies for our army to help our campaign through rituals. And one of the options that was given to us generals 
was uh, if we were playing vanilla human, which I was, uh, didn't have any lineage, which is essentially, as you say, is the races, um, we could start manifesting trappings of a changeling if we wanted. Now, I'm pretty sure all of us but one did it. So four out of the five decided, hell yeah, we'll be changelings. And I only wear long ears. Um, I know I've given over some pictures um, taken by the one for Oliver Facey, who, who, who shows that. Um, but like that's the start of my manifestings and the horn, the antlers, the the feathers on the eyes, um, the wild mane hair. Like these are all things that can constitute as your trappings. It's just as long as you're following the basic minimum requirements to do it, you you can do it. You know. And again, the wiki says that. Um, as you say, he didn't read that first time. Um, but then ho hopefully people do take the time and read it. It is long. It is big. But there's a lot of information. And there's a lot of things that have happened in the game. So that's why it may come across as a bit daunting. Just take it piece by piece. <laughs> yeah. Because it's such a big thing. And when I first read the work wiki, I was very much like, wow, this is bigger than any other wiki I've looked at. Because um, I'm, I'm the player that goes to CP as well as UPixie. Yep. And that experience is, the wiki on there is very small. So seeing yeah. something larger was just a bit daunting of myself. Um, but yeah, it was, it's definitely a game that I advertise. And a game I, I can definitely, for what you've been saying, you would advertise as well. Um, I would advertise because it's solely my only play game. Um, that might change with next year's LARPs because we're going to go try a new LARP. But I ref a lot of games. I crew a lot of games. Um, even CP, I'm half a player, half an event team. So for me, Empire is a pure play game for me. I go there as a player. Um, I have done some battlefield refing for Empire. So um, that's instead of me monstering, I've put on a tabard and a radio. And I've gone and done refing for the battle instead of monstering because there's a social contract um, in place that if you take the battlefield as a player, you've got to monster the other side. Um, and this is an option to some players who have the experience as referees um, who are normally put forward by part-time or full-time referees of, oh, I know somebody who can do that. And, and one of my friends who... who who is a full-time referee put me forward uh, and then i went and spoke to pd about it and they said yeah that's an option you, you can totally come do it and i really enjoyed it because i got to see a battlefield from, from a different side again and it's, it's, it's very the battle was a very bigger empire because there's a lot of people so it, it was a very fun experience to see it from another side but um as long as you're fulfilling as a player your basic commitment so you've, you've you may have played your battle on saturday but you now need to go monster on sunday because otherwise you're not giving the same fairness to everybody else across the field um and i think that is a very big thing to remember you don't have to take the battlefield either um it is an option where you don't have to take it like so since i've been a senator i haven't stepped foot on the battlefield at all because you don't have to do it you could because game doesn't stop when the battles are happening the, the anvil is all still live you can wander in and you can talk to people you can still do all your role play you can still do all your dealings you know it's still a live environment so essentially there's two games at this point happening because you've got everybody who's on the battlefield uh, who is either monstering or fighting uh, as heroes and then you've got people like myself, who are sitting in, 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 in the bar having breakfast uh, with a load of paperwork on the table discussing uh, what I'm going to do in Senate for the rest of the day or, or what I want to achieve and, and, and essentially having a meeting with those that I know aren't taking the battlefield. You know, so the role play is still happening. Um, yeah. But if you do take the battlefield, it is very important that you do go do your social contract and go monster. It's very big and clever. And also, monstering's loads of fun. I've had absolutely loads of fun monstering um, Empire. Like, I think one battle we got to play uh, Valorn, which were essentially plant zombies, and we were husks. And we got told to either play Dawn of the Dead, really slow zombies, or 28 Days, where you're just sprinting. And the 28 Days one was really fun, because every time I played a zombie, it's always a slow, shambling zombie. 
Um, but after like 20 minutes, I decided to go back and do a slow shambling zombie because I was just sprinting everywhere, getting drummed down, going back to a respawn, sprinting out again. Um, but th there's loads of fun opportunities and it's really cool in my opinion that you get, especially when you get to play like the barbarian nations, you know, like you've heard about the Druze, you've heard about the Grendel, you've heard about the Otoon, you know, and now you get to play one, you know, you, you get stats given to you. Um, they, they all have like their kit requirements as a board when you turn up saying what they want for that battle. So it might be if you're playing Yotun, you don't need bows but they want a bit more armor you know so so it allows players to do it and then something called the emus are a thing which are the empire uh, monster units so that's uh nations themselves getting everybody together and going okay so we we can all play together as our nation but as monsters you know let's go make our own unit in game you know? and i know some people have been very vocal about that um I think my door's just gone. Any deliveries? My food deliveries just turned up. Um, so you can really much do that, and it, it's 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 a great great side of it. Um, I've seen build blocks form up. I've seen you know, a lot of in the winter mark when they're playing like the Jotun on the other side because because of how much them as bad bad guys are to the winter mark that they get to go stomp on another nation as these guys that they're meant to hate for so much. But they've got all the armor, they've got the shields, they've got the sword and board, so they can do that as as a nation. And, it, and it's just a sight to see when when you've got like two, three hundred players just form one shield, board. and you're like, well, I know there's more out here, but where are they? You know, and that's where you get like the flank attacks happening, and battles can be quite quite chaotic. Yeah, you're gonna be. Uh, so, so with. Also, all that in mind, it, it, it sounds, from also my experience and your experience, Empire is definitely a game that people should do and should try out. And it's such an interaction off screen and on screen, because obviously the, in CP there's no downtime, but in Empire there's... Yep. Would you say there's a sort of downtime? It's not really a thing. There, but there, there, a thing. There, there are options for downtimes. Like if you have navies and military units, you can assign them. Um, there is an aspect of a downtime game. But yeah. it's not a personalised downtime where uh, over a thousand players are going to write what they're going to do and suddenly they're all going to get a load of plot from it. Um, normally it's... If, if you'll get mentioned in like the pre-briefs, pre-event briefs, such as the Wind of War, Wind of Fortunes, they have come, for instance, from actions from the event before. So the reason why I did all those insights was because my National Assembly, so my Nation's Assembly of Priests, agreed that it was me as a, as a priest that was the one to do it. So, and then I got a mention because of it. Um, but there definitely are um, options for a kind of downtime. I think one of the most influential ones over the last couple of years was the Doomtag raid on the Salt Islands with the Grendel, where the largest, largest free form attack or players units, so their military units, their their fleets, all went and just took an opportunity. There was there wasn't any. I think there might have been one Imper Imperial Navy there. But like there was no armies there. Like it was just a bunch of captains of their military units and their fleets going, What happens if we all get together and go raid? And they did, and they pulled off such a successful raid. Um, and loads of players got loads of resources from it um, because their units went out there and did the thing and attacked the Salt Isles. And it, and it was a really devastating blow to the Grendel themselves that then had, as I say, it's that whole thing of throwing a stone in the lake and watching the ripples because that then affected how the Grendel fought on the wider military campaign. Because suddenly, whilst they're all out all across the empire with their armies, they're getting attacked at home and they didn't even see it coming. And it was just, and that was all done via a downtime action because you can tell them what to do. And the civil service turned around and went, okay, if you want to do this thing, you just need to select it um, on on your profile on the website, and then we'll give the feedback. 
but they had to hit a certain number to be successful and they went over that number you know so there is a kind of downtime there definitely is a kind of downtime but it's not a personalized downtime at all so as gentlemen we're going to wrap up this uh interview uh thank you pixie for coming in and uh, being our guest to um talk about empire now where can they find you pixie? um well first of all thank you for having me jack like i, I really appreciate any time to talk about a lot um so you can find me well in the field you'll find me probably in barushka um if you have twitch i do have a twitch channel uh wasteland pixie um where i do talk about a lot i do miniature painting and gaming and now the world's opening up again we can do some gaming with friends um so there'll be more on the live streams um and i think yeah that's it for me Oh, and also have to shamelessly plug uh, our own YouTube channel that myself and my partner Zana uh, do called Fantasy Fox, where you will find uh, LARP videos. Uh, we've just recently dropped one about the Wolves faction at CP. Um, so please go give that a nice like and subscribe. Uh, and that'd be very much appreciated. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, also find me. I'm uh, You can find me on... Um, not many, twi I don't do Twitch or anything like that, but you can find me on Facebook. You can also, I'm going to shamelessly plug in my own thing as well here, uh, Clash of the Cosmos LRP, which I have brought up in an interview with Lot before, uh, where we are now in our one year anniversary. So if you want to come along, we are on Facebook. Uh, soon we are possibly going to go to YouTube. Uh, but yeah, so... Also, you can find uh, Lartbook at on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and on YouTube. Yeah. So I imagine the links are going to be down below. Yeah, down below, I think, or or if they get plugged up here or something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much, Pixie, uh, for coming on, and uh, hope you all have a good day, and um, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.